so. I missed out on a lot of stuff last time. Yeah, even I, Go Motion, cannot craft the perfect video sometimes. But friggin' that's what sequels are for, right? So hey, here's something we can do to fill the void I left in part one. Time to shit on more Five Nights Freddy's merchandise. Ah! Uh, before I begin, uh, misconception in the last video, uh, Toy Wiz don't manufacture these funky dudes, they were produced by Just Toys, so uh, yeah, do what you please with that info. Okay, so could you imagine that I didn't cover everything in the previous merch video? In actual fact, I don't think I came anywhere near close, so screw it, part 2. McFarlane, yeah, this company was mentioned in the comments of the last video en masse. People really, really want me to give my thoughts on the stuff these guys put out, and the stuff these guys put out are labelled as construction sets, it's knockoff Lego. But to be fair, to them, this stuff doesn't look half bad. I mean, they do manage to cram a surprising amount of detail into these sets for what they are. Are the minifigures ugly? Tch, yeah. Uh, but like Funko's stupid FNAF pop figures, intentionally or unintentionally, they capture the creepy factor of the characters they're based on. So, uh... Props, I guess. They at least know what's working for them. Half the sets are just, yeah, here's the figure, have a relative square foot of flooring too. Would I consider this good merchandise? Uh, yeah, if you're into that sort of thing. Unfortunately, Doesn't look like I'll be picking up any of this exclusive merchandise anytime soon. Also, apparently the sets actually suck dick. Yeah, a friend of mine had a few of these gifted to her, and she had several issues with these sets. To paraphrase her, none of the figures have any polish. Instead, it's all just rough paint. More specifically, she had issues with the scooping room, where Enid's legs pop off too easily, the empty heads are legitimately just the regular figure heads with the eyes painted black, and the scooper itself apparently was incredibly difficult to assemble. Issues with the prize corner, well, the puppet's legs being made straight from Lego blocks with a pair of much shorter poseable legs sitting atop of them, which just looks stupid. And apparently clicking the plush toy piece into place was so difficult she had to grab a blade and chip away some plastic just for it to barely fit. Also, like, just comparing it to the game, where the prize corner's usually crammed full of balloons and streamers and whatnot, well, this thing's just depressingly empty. The Pirate's Cove set apparently is a step up. Uh, the walls have a cool marble look to imitate the stained walls from the game. The floorboards have a bumpy wooden texture. There's apparently even a little ship's wheel in there. However, the curtains are made from really thin paper, making them impossible to pull back and they just bounce back into place. Uh, Foxy's got weird paint issues as well, the whole set just kind of feels crammed. Speaking of Foxy though, his figure is weirdly well detailed. There's dimension to it, with legitimate holes in his suit so you can see parts of the endoskeleton inside. Also friend in question is Toaster Bath Bombs, go follow her on Twitter, she's a really good artist. Yeah, so uh, there are definitely issues with these sets, but like, you could do worse? I mean, it all looks the part, you know, for the most part. And the idea of LEGO FNAF sets is kind of novel in a way. You want me to ruin it? <coughs> Why are there balloons in the office? Why does Freddy's hat have a red stripe? Why is he missing his suit hands? Why does he have the belly of Nightmare Fredbear? And oh, the cherry on top. It's a fan model. I have no idea how this got past quality assurance. He's been run over. That's a tire track. He's tire track Freddy. Oh, damn. Well, hey, at least those designs never made it to store shelves. Uh-oh. Somebody somewhere looked at the FNAF 2 minigames and thought, oh, baby commercialism. I mean, on paper, sure, within the confines of the FNAF community, at least, these might be neat little collectibles to own. But one, they're not 8-bit. Two, they've managed to make even these look bad. This is so strange. Okay, so what they've done here is taken the in-game sprites, but instead of adhering to the simplistic nature of using Lego blocks to construct a retro looking character, they've instead printed all the tiny little details from the original sprites onto the blocks for you to just assemble together from a glance. It's totally pointless. What would have been cooler would have been for these figures to just come in one solid mold as plastic toys. That way you wouldn't have to dodge all these strange ass design choices and you wouldn't have to include these strange looking black marks to simulate empty space. What? Also, purple guy. This looks bad. These figures are so messy to look at, and it feels like there wasn't much thought put into whether these actually look good as collectible figures. However, speaking of, I don't actually really like the FNAF 2 sprites that much in general. This is me going on a bit of a tangent, and also me being a massive nerd <laughs> yet again, but whipping out the shape tool in MS Paint doesn't really do it for me. Uh, a user by the name of Mr. Winter 666 threw together a really good concept of what these sprites actually could have looked like on an Atari 2600. Close enough to the original designs where I feel like Scott was trying to emulate that look, 
but you know, these feel a lot more grounded and less, I don't know, rushed. This is just series one of these figures though, they did make a series two of these things based on the sprites from Five Nights at Freddy's 4 and surprisingly did a far better job at sticking to the source material this time. Half of them still look stupid though, shut up. Hey, anyway, um, did I mention Funko? No, I've, I've never talked about Funko? Right, fantastic, I wanna talk about Funko. This lot make a lot of FNAF stuff fellas, including but not limited to everything in the previous FNAF merch video I made, so go watch it after this one's over. While they're more known for spewing out pop figures, for certain IPs they'll throw out a few series of mystery mini blind bag figures. They're exactly what you think they are, little stylized plastic creatures shoved into a cardboard box and tossed into your local Walmart or Target. I'm British, shut up. And boy, did FNAF get this treatment. Uh, like with most Funko products, they're at the very least okay. I'm not too strongly for or against any of them, uh, except the Molten Freddy figure. This guy is pretty fresh looking. Or, I don't know, Molten Freddy's got like zero merch aside from this one figure. Uh, I don't know, maybe it's Stockholm Syndrome. Well, hey, at least most of the figures here are stylized. Most of the time, Funko will just get design elements flat out incorrect. If you don't want to count the minor things like Shadow Freddy and Bunny's pop figure color palettes being swapped, or the fact that Nightmare Chica is given a blue right eye, or that they'll straight up get characterized wrong, or the fact that they give every classic animatronic top teeth, yeah, bro, it's all pretty spot on other than that. Definitely. Funko's still just kind of garbage in a few areas too, morally, like basing these plastic figures off of SFM models or straight up copy pasting fan edits to paste onto the box art for their posable figures. Uh, it almost feels kind of pointless to complain about Funko at this point with the product quality threshold being just good enough. It's like screaming into Devoid, yo. Oh, and literally just as I'm editing this video, Funko have gone ahead and leaked the characters, name of, and merch associated with the new FNAF game Steel Wool have been developing. How do you screw up this badly? <gasps> wow, is that the sound of Scott revoking Funko's license? Because he sure should at this point. <laughs> if we want to get away from the big boy manufacturers for a bit, countless other companies have thrown out all sorts of wacky ass FNAF merchandise and other statements you've never heard before. Fidget spinners, remember these dickhead things? Hey, just slap a PNG of Freddy on the front, that'll do it. Not satisfied? Well, hey, wear these cool ass sunglasses, man. That'll get your shitty FNAF merch fix. Woo! Just look at how funky fresh these look. Not exactly a small company, but hell, even NECA tossed out these properly terrible looking scalers. I really... Really don't understand it. Joke all you want, it really does feel like a lot of these companies are just out here to make a quick buck. Because marketable characters do be that way though. Speaking of, here's the physical embodiment of we gotta sell this shit quick. It's a FNAF flashlight, sure, novel idea. Take one of the core elements from several of the mainline FNAF games and sell it with its own spin. The spin? It projects an image of Freddy onto your wall. Whoa, zany. There are several variations of this to my knowledge, each featuring a different character to project, and what more can you say to this other than that's a generous 30 seconds of mild interest that I'll never get back? You wanna see something funny? Now I don't know about you, but I'd be hard pressed not to drop 500 macaronis on this bad boy. I mean, what kid wouldn't be caught without a three foot replica of this handsome lad? Brought to us by Naker yet again. Oh yeah, these guys make me proud. And now, the one topic I swore I wouldn't talk about last time due to not really caring about it, the FNAF books, more specifically these ones. The survival logbook. This is cool. Have I slash read bought it? Of course not. Do I sound like someone who knows how to read? But like I mentioned in the last match video, this is meant to be canon to the FNAF universe with hints and nods to certain aspects of the lore. It even belongs to Michael Afton. Schmidt, I don't know. And yeah, that's kind of cool. Anything that's been specifically tailored to look like something pulled straight from the FNAF universe is at least automatically decent, usually. The Freddy Files, on the other hand, is chock full of stolen renders. What do you think this is funny. And technically, this is the updated version, a revised edition featuring more info regarding some of the later games, so this is even less of an excuse to screw up. They've also used some of the Funko action figure renders for some of the characters for absolutely no reason. Oh. Bonkers. Anyway, point is, most companies do not seem to care that much about accuracy slash relevance when it comes to Five Nights at Freddy's merchandise. I have no idea why this is, the issue is far spread out among several manufacturers and designers, and it's just embarrassing to say the least. I'd be willing to bet the bad FNAF merch of the world is a big chunk of the reason why the series gets such a bad rep, even today. I mean, there's not much else to be said other than the fact that Five Nights at Freddy's characters are seen by a lot of companies as nothing more than an opportunity to be marketable to children. That's likely why, despite how cool it would be to have some more subtle apparel, or a Freddy Fazbear figure with glowing eyes, oh. Well, I suppose I got what I asked for. <laughs> oh, god damn it. Funko, you bitch! Okay, so this here checks the boxes I went over last time. I wanted a larger Freddy Fazbear figure with glowing eyes, a sandbox, and proper fur. Does this tick all those boxes? Yes. Does it still suck? Yeah, huh? Conceptually, a miniature animatronic Freddy Fazbear is really cool, but as tends to be tradition with FNAF merch, going out of their way to push the facts that, oh, this is a scary toy, just makes this plain cringe to me, dude. But what if there was a beacon of hope? 
again. Yeah, a very interesting collaboration that only just dropped less than a week ago writing this. Uh, Cloak, the clothing brand owned by Markiplier and Jack Jacksepticeye, have teamed up with Scott Cawthon to produce some, uh... I mean, it's FNAF merch, right? <laughs> right off the bat, I like the direction they attempted to go in here for some more subtle FNAF apparel, well, subtle with a grain of salt, but it goes for this minimalistic style synonymous with Cloak's branding that, uh, I understand this sort of clothing style doesn't have super mass appeal, I guess you could put it, uh, but to be honest, I'm not super into all of this, but it's cool that we're now getting FNAF apparel that isn't just, you know, this. Fair warning though, some of this stuff is going for upwards of like 80 bucks, so I don't know, cop it while you can I suppose. None of this is stuff I'm dying to own, so ugh, I don't know, I'd rather not slap a 60 on the table and walk away with a JPEG Toy Freddy hoodie. Well, in conclusion, subsequently, in summary, just give us some more decent merchandise someday. I'm sure marketing these characters towards children does wonders for the funkers of the world, but I'm still desperately clinging onto that hope that eventually we'll have something to top the likes of Sanchi. And like, it's not that big of a deal. I'm sure most people could live without a dope-ass statue of Springtrap and the Fazbear Fright Fire. Holy shit, this is one of the coolest things I've ever seen. Go check out Katani on Twitter. But I think even releasing just a small line of medium-sized, high-quality figures accurate to their respective in-game counterparts would draw in a lot of attention, both from younger kids and older fans. You know, something that would satisfy a lot of people and make for some great merchandise. I mean, like, I get it. Cheap toys and mass appeal go hand in hand with this sort of thing. But come on, guys, have some integrity, you dumb Tesco bitches. Throw out another Blacklight Funko, why don't you, dickheads? Okay, so, what have we learned through two videos discussing various pieces of FNAF merchandise? That it's news to anyone that companies will try to milk the living hell out of anything they can latch their claws onto? Nope. That deep down, all these videos are are just Scott the Was FNAF knockoffs? Maybe. That Funko's only positive contribution to society is the Toy Freddy Funko Bob? <laughs> yeah.